young entrepreneurs listening right now, or if you're just young at heart entrepreneurs, that's great. I hope that you are tuning into this conference because you want to learn how to be successful and bring your incredible dream into reality. We all start off with a dream in our heart and a vision of what we want to create in the world. And that is why I love to work with visionary entrepreneurs and executives, because it's so exciting to see their dreams come to life. Now, many people view entrepreneurship as something you do. I see it as someone you get to become. See, entrepreneurs, we think differently. We see possibilities where others see roadblocks. We see opportunities where others don't really see anything at all. And entrepreneurship and leadership is a way of being, not simply a series of actions that you take. And entrepreneurship can be the most transformational and impactful journey of your life. And that's why I'm here today. I want to help you to not blow it. That's right. Don't blow it. So many entrepreneurs think that if they just have the right strategy and they mold themselves into this perfect business owner, they have the right words, they craft the right offer, they create the right product, that they're going to be a multimillionaire overnight. But most of the time, what you don't see are the years of trial and error and experience building that led to this seemingly overnight success. I want to save you from years of chasing strategies and burning yourself out along the way and share with you today the four C's of courageously authentic leadership that when applied in any situation, whether it be entrepreneurial or if you end up working for someone, will help you break barriers, unlock extraordinary opportunities, and create remarkable results. Now, I've been where you are, and I can tell you that these four principles have played out in pretty much every successful venture that I've either witnessed or been a part of, whether that be building a successful business or showing up as a leader in a new job. The four C's, you might wanna write this down. The four C's are clarity, courage, connection, and communication. And today I'd like to share two stories with you to illustrate how these principles show up and that what makes the most difference in the results that you experience is how you show up, not just what you do. At the end of this presentation, I'll share with you a very exciting free gift from a legend in the leadership space that will help you along your journey. So stay tuned for that. Now, I will never forget when I was a young Lieutenant in the Air Force, I was about 26 years old. I volunteered to work with a team of five other leaders and none of us had ever met before. We were charged with merging two organizations into a brand new organization of more than 450 people. Now, the first time we met each other, we met in a parking lot because we had no building. But we met in that parking lot to discuss our way forward. And we were all really eager to get going and get, and everyone just seemed excited to work together. So it was really awesome. However, to fully appreciate how this story unfolds, you need a little bit of insider information that I did not have when this journey began. You see, my right-hand person, we'll call him DA, had an initial thought run through his mind when he first saw me in that parking lot. And it went something like, great. I get stuck with the blonde bimbo cheerleader. <laughs> How many of you think that's pretty offensive and probably not the best way to start off on this journey? Well, keep that little nugget of information in your hip pocket as we continue, because we'll get back to that. Now, I want you to know this merger this was not a normal merger. We actually were starting from scratch. Like I said, no office building, no computers, very little money. And the six of us were charged with creating something out of nothing. That sounds a lot like an entrepreneur's journey, right? So when we met in that parking lot, 
we devised a vision of what we ultimately wanted to create together. We gained clarity, that first C, of our desired future state so that all of us would understand what we were working toward together. Now, the added benefit of clarity that I did not understand at the time, but I do now as a transformational mindset facilitator and a brain health trainer, is how clarity creates a roadmap in your brain. Our brain is a goal achieving machine. And when we create clarity around where we wanna go, who we wanna be, and what we wanna create, our brain will actually start looking for and creating pathways to get us there. But far too often, we are just wishy-washy about the outcomes that we're working toward. We don't have a lot of focus or we focus on what we don't want instead of what we do want. And if you take away nothing else from today, remember this, you always get more of what you focus on. Now, just because you're clear on what you want, that doesn't mean that the journey is easy, right? Getting to the outcome isn't always easy. It takes courage. And that's the second C. It takes courage to step into the unknown and create something where there was nothing before. And that is exactly what we did. We ended up taking over a nearly condemned building and used our sweat equity to turn it into somewhat habitable office spaces. We scoured for any IT equipment that we could find, and we focused on building relationships and trust with the members of our new unit who had no idea what to expect from their new leadership team. And even though we started with almost nothing, we ended up launching this new merger ahead of schedule with zero service interruption to our members, and we earned exemplary ratings on our management performance review. But these accomplishments did not come easy. They came from stretching our capacity beyond what we thought was possible and working together as a team, which leads us to the third C of courageously authentic leadership. That is connection. Now, according to Horst Schultz, the co-founder of Ritz-Carlton Hotels and the two-time winner of the prestigious Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award for Exemplary Customer Service, the number one question that customers are asking about a business is, do they care about me? Do they care about me? Connecting with the members of our new organization was critical. Getting to know their dreams, desires, frustrations, that became our number one priority. We reached out and had real conversations with people, not, hey, how's the weather today? Sky looks blue. No, nobody cares about that. We got to know them and they knew that we cared about them and their experiences, both at work and in life. It was this connection that turned a potentially detrimental experience into a rewarding one. See, as we were tr transferring the human resources files into our system, we noticed that some information was missing. And when we updated that information correctly, one of the members who was about to be promoted became ineligible for promotion. And he wasn't even eligible in the first place, but the information in the system was wrong. So he was expecting to get promoted. And I remember dreading that conversation that we had to have with him to tell him that his promotion was delayed. We invited his wife to the conversation with his approval, of course, because we knew their situation and we knew that this promotion affected both of them. But to my surprise, when we gave them the news, they understood. And they thanked us for the way that we included them in the process and the way that we shared the information in a genuine and honest way. Now, the information was the same. This promotion was being delayed a full year, but we showed up for them. And that's what they took away from the conversation. So when I say that connection is the name of the leadership game, 
and the way you show up is more important than what you do, that's what I mean. Connection builds emotional currency with others. And that emotional currency will take you far if, and only if, it is created from a place of authenticity and employed from a place of integrity. And that brings us to the fourth C of courageously authentic leadership, communication. So when it was time for me to move on to my next position a year later, DA confided in me that he made this initial derogatory judgment about me based on my personality and appearance. Do you remember what it was? Yeah. When he shared that his judgment was that I was a blonde bimbo cheerleader, I laughed out loud. I literally laughed out loud. Now, I could have been really offended. I could have cried racism or sexism. DA is a black male. But two key elements were at play here. One, I knew who I was, and that wasn't me. But two, DA and I had developed a mutually admirable and trusting relationship during the year that we worked together. I knew his heart, and I was grateful to him for having the courage and trust to communicate openly and share that with me. It wasn't easy for him, and he didn't have to do it. But it let me know that even when people make snap judgments about us, which, okay, they will, right? We're human. When we show up in our full authenticity with a servant's heart and a problem solver's mind, we end up coming out ahead without having to change ourselves into something we're not. And while he may have thought being a cheerleader meant something derogatory in business and military, I had quite a different perspective. Because what DA did not know is that I was a cheerleader, a national collegiate champion, as a matter of fact, and a National Cheerleaders Association All-American who represented in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So while I am in no way a bimbo and blonde, only when I pay for it, I'm proud of the lessons that I learned about work ethic, success, defeat, resilience, and esprit de corps as a cheerleader at Oklahoma State University. So it wasn't derogatory to me at all. And even though he made that judgment initially in a derogatory way, the year that we spent together building this team changed his perspective 180. We became friends and colleagues, and we built a mutual respect for each other. Now, that story that I just shared with you is one of success, right? It's about how we use the four C's of courageously authentic leadership to collectively create a successful outcome and how building relationships with each other enabled us to communicate openly and honestly, even when the topics were hard to talk about. But what about when things don't turn out well? Like many of us are taught that failure is bad. And we're taught, oh, only talk about the success, don't talk about failures. That's simply not true. We are taught so many lies about leadership that hold us back from living into our full potential. So for the remainder of this presentation, we're gonna focus on one of the top 10 lies of limitless leadership. The lie that great leaders don't fail. So, I just shared with you that in college, I was part of the Oklahoma State University cheer team that earned a collegiate national championship title. But one of the reasons that that accomplishment holds such a special place in my heart is because I did not make the team the first year I tried out. When I graduated from high school and I was going off to Oklahoma State, I trained all summer to be ready for OSU tryouts. I was going to be an OSU cheerleader, and that is all there was to it. So when I was not selected to be on the team, I was devastated. I didn't even know what to do with myself. And a friend of mine who made the team, she told me, she said, I don't understand why you didn't make it. Your skill set's just as good as some of the others. I didn't know. But after some time, I was able to talk with the head coach 
And he let me know that while my skills were on par, I didn't present myself in a confident collegiate manner. I still presented myself as a young high school girl. And that was not going to cut it in the big leagues. So I learned a very valuable lesson that day. While I had worked on my technical skills all through the summer, I never studied the differences in presentation between high school and college. It didn't even dawn on me. But had I thought about that, I literally could have spent an hour observing their presentation skills and maybe talking to a few of them about their experiences, and I could have changed the entire outcome. But instead of taking that knowledge and applying it to be ready for the next year, I sulked. I did. I just sulked. I, I didn't move forward at all. I didn't know what to do. And I kept telling myself that I'm not good enough to be on that team or else I would be. And when they won a national championship that year that I was not on the team, that little sabotaging voice in my head, you know the one, you have one too. It told me, see, they're at the top of their game. What made you think you belonged at that team? Does any of that sound familiar to anyone? Anyone else ever hear this little voice in your head? Yeah, you and everyone else on this planet. Dr. Shirzad Shabain, author and of the um, best-selling book, I'm sorry, yeah, best-selling book, Positive Intelligence, why only 20% of teams and individuals achieve their true potential and how you can achieve yours. He calls these voices saboteurs, and he explains the neuroscience behind this naturally occurring issue and how to rewire your brain to tap into your full potential. Now, I utilize these frameworks and neuroencoding in my training and coaching now, and I wish that I had access to these frameworks when I was younger. You see that sabotaging voice? It got the best of me, and I actually chose not to try out again the next year. I thought, why bother? I'm not good enough to be on a national championship team. So I actually let the tryouts just pass by. I didn't even go. But then divine intervention came my way. I was at a party and I overheard some people talking about the cheer team growing and opening up four slots on the team. Tryouts were in two weeks. But right then, I knew. I knew this was my chance. It seemed crazy because it had been a year since I've really worked on my skills, but something inside me said, shut up, sabotaging voice. This is our chance. And instantly, I could see in my mind showing up powerfully at those tryouts, showing up confidently, believing that I belonged there, and making the judges believe it too. I showed up for those tryouts. And even though I over-rotated on a tumbling pass and I fell on my butt, it's a true story, I handled it with grace and confidence. And part of me felt like I was just faking it till I made it. But really what was happening is I was finding the courage inside of myself to show up in my full power, prepared to give everything I had and I visualized the outcome that I wanted, and it paid off. It didn't matter that one thing I did during tryouts didn't go perfectly. What mattered was how I showed up. And that year, when OSU won its back-to-back -back national championship, I was there helping to create that outcome. So what I initially thought was a failure ended up being one of the greatest blessings in my life. Had I made the team the first time I tried out, I wouldn't have built the character that came from pulling myself out of this failure bunk and refocusing on what I truly wanted. I took action and I made it happen. So we benefit from an exponential return on failure, just like a return on investment, only when we assess the failure in a productive way and utilize those lessons to leap forward faster. 
And I say leap forward because that is the acronym we use in Courageously Authentic Leadership Mastery to remember the four ways that we can learn from failure. So I want you to write this down too. LEAP stands for lead, educate, echo, and prepare. Because failure can actually lead us to a destination that we've not yet envisioned. And when we think we know the best outcome and we're working toward it, sometimes failures along the way reveal alternate outcomes or destinations that may be more aligned with what we were ultimately trying to achieve. So failure may lead us in a different direction. Failure can also educate us about things that we did not yet know and provide new knowledge and perspectives that will contribute to our success if, and if, only if, we stay in the game and keep moving forward. Now, this next one is sometimes difficult for folks to grasp. So pay attention to this one. It's huge. Failure can also echo something within us that needs more attention. When we are working toward an outcome that somehow continues to beyond, be, be beyond our reach, right? And we continue to find ourselves in situations or relationships that we don't desire and they're not serving us well, it is imperative that we slow down and look within ourselves. Something we don't have time to go deeply into today, but is vitally important, is understanding how our psychology, which is our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs, drive our actions, which shape our results. I'll say that again. It's vitally important that we understand that our psychology, our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs, drive our actions, which shape our results. When we keep seeing the same undesirable outcomes, chances are pretty good that our own psychology is contributing to the outcomes that we don't want. And last but certainly not least, failure can prepare us for an opportunity that is not yet within our current awareness. Sometimes we just can't make sense of failure in the moment. And even shortly after it happens, we still don't understand why it did. But have you ever had a situation where long after the failure, something happens and you realize that the earlier failure or bad experience that you couldn't make sense of at the time actually enabled where you are right now? It was a preparation for something greater. And when we understand how to frame failure in this way, we recognize that failure is an important part of the leadership journey. So I encourage you, fail fast and do it so that you can leap forward faster. Now, in closing, I would like to share with you, in a recent closed door session that I was a part of with John Maxwell, John Maxwell has been named the world's most influential leadership expert by Inc. Magazine. In that session, he asked, what would you attempt to do if you knew you were gonna fail, but you would receive a positive return on failure that would ultimately benefit you? If we expected a positive return on failure, we'd embrace it instead of being embarrassed by it. I challenge you to ponder that question and to take advantage of the free gift that I have for you today. And I am so excited because now you have the opportunity to learn directly from John Maxwell himself. John has offered to hold a virtual invite only special teaching on his book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth on April 30th. That's coming up here in about 11 days. This is only for a select group of Maxwell certified leadership coaches, which I am part of that community, and for those that are within our own community. And I'm honored to be a part of that group and be able to offer you the opportunity to learn directly from John for free. All you have to do is register at bit.ly forward slash forward slash Maxwell Live 22. I'm going to put it in the chat. And hopefully that will go in so that you can get there easily. There we go. All right. So all you've got to do is go there and register and you're good to go. 
I hope that I will see you on April 30th. And if you're not able to make it, then that's okay. Please still register because I can send you the recording when it's available. The biggest takeaway as we close this out that I can leave with you is to rock who you are. Create your own reality and lead with courageous authenticity. It makes such a difference in creating possibilities and opportunities that you would have never recognized or you may have unknowingly shut down otherwise. Thank you for spending this time with me. And I hope that you walk away with some golden nuggets that will serve you well on your entrepreneurial leadership journey. I look forward to seeing you April 30th. And please connect with me on LinkedIn at Tina Parker or TP Sunshine, depending on how it comes out, or through my website at leadoutsidethelines.com. Thank you, everybody.